Hi, welcome to my channel. My name is Sven and I hope you're doing great. Today we will look at a tool that is often misunderstood and not really used by a lot of people because of its seemingly complex behavior, the RGB mixer. So let's break down what it does and how to use it because it's actually pretty easy and super useful. So in order to understand what the RGB mixer does, we have to understand how RGB works. Each digital image consists of three individual color channels, red, green and blue. And the balance of those channels, meaning how much content there is in each one, creates the colors we see on the screen. And usually with standard tools like Lift, Gamma and Gain, we only manipulate the intensity of each channel on its own. The RGB mixer, however, allows something called crosstalk. It simply mixes the signal of one channel into another channel. And this can create some interesting and very useful effects. And by the way, first let's disable preserve luminance, because it's easier to understand the tool with this checkbox turned off, and we'll get to that in a minute. So as you can see in this image, there's some content in the red channel here, but nothing in the green or blue channel. The green channel has some signal here. Now, if we increase the intensity of the red in for our green channel, for example, we mix the signal of the original red channel into the green channel. Of course, the entire image turns green now. However, if we counterbalance this by turning down the green in of the green channel, we can see that now we've created some interesting new colors that haven't been there before. And by the way, an easy rule of thumb on how to counterbalance the channels is that these three numbers have to add up to one. So if it's 0.3 in the red channel, then you have to put the green channel to 0.7, for example. This way, the overall response of the channel stays the same and our neutrals, so all the grays that have zero saturation, stay neutral. And with Resolve 19, we got the checkboxes for auto balance here. This basically takes care of the counterbalance automatically, which is super useful. But it's also a good idea to balance it manually because you have a bit more control over it. And it's good to know how it actually works. Now let's enable preserve luminance as well. Now the tool responds a bit differently and we can see some influence in the other channels as well. But this is basically only because it now tries to preserve the luminance of the original image. When we modify color, we always somehow influence the luminance and with the RGB mixer, this effect can be quite strong. Especially with the green channel, we see a big difference. And that's why we can preserve the original luminance appearance with this checkbox now it feels like we're only affecting the color rendering. So in the previous examples there were a lot of hue shifts and it looks a bit weird. And this is only for demonstration purposes, to show you how the tool works. But let's have a look at how it is useful and what you can do with it. A super simple but highly stylized look you can create with the RGB mixer is the two-strip look. This is a really old look that stems from the very beginnings of color film. You can create it by reducing our three-channel RGB image into effectively two channels by making the green and blue channel the same. So either you replace the green with the blue or vice versa. You can also mix them in equal amounts. In the vector scope, we can now see that there is zero information in the yellows, greens, blues and magentas. Everything is just red and cyan. And this look is super stylized and can be overused very easily, but let's face it, it just looks cool. A second trick, and that one is even more experimental, would be to flip the green channel. I call this the inverse green look, because now you essentially invert what the green channel is responsible for. Green becomes magenta and magenta becomes green. And this creates an interesting effect in nature shots, because all the grass and all the leaves are magenta. You have to be a bit careful with skin here, because the inversion of course also makes red patches in the skin appear more yellowish green now. But in an outer-worldly sci-fi scene, this could totally work. And as I said, this is an experimental look and not suited for everything, of course, but maybe with a qualifier on everything but the skin, this could totally work for some fantasy look. And probably one of my favorite effects with the tool is the skin compression. I use this on almost every grading because it makes skin look a bit more healthy and it also gets rid of super saturated greens and magentas. You can limit this to the skin tones with a qualifier or power window, but I usually use it on the entire show with light settings. The way you set it up is by mixing some of the red and blue into the green channel and maybe also mixing some green into the blue channel. If we look at the before and after, we can see a kind of compression along this diagonal axis. And this just works wonders, especially for highly saturated colors. Because the more saturated a green or magenta color is, the more it gets influenced by this trick. Now, let's look at some advanced tricks. In this clip, there's almost no information in the red channel. 
but we have a lot of data in the blue and green channel. If we tried to warm up the white balance with tools like offset or gain, we wouldn't really get far because they only work on one channel at a time. If there's nothing in the red channel to begin with, we can't boost anything here. But with the RGB mixer, we can actually mix in a blend of green and blue into the red channel and instantly get back some detail in our skin. Because this scene is in an artificial light setup anyway, it looks totally believable that the skin rendering is not super perfect, but it also looks way better than the monochromatic blue skin at the beginning. Another advanced trick is to use the RGB mixer in a linear gamma. It is important though to tag the timeline color space, and while this is done automatically in color managed projects, you have to do this manually if you use YRGB unmanaged. For more information about this topic, please check out the video linked above. It is super important here that we disable preserve luminance since this can create artifacts immediately. But now the RGB mixer essentially becomes a gamut converter, because the math is exactly the same. This technique can create some interesting effects as well, but use it carefully, because even without preserve luminance, it can happen that the image breaks with too strong settings. And one final trick is to use the RGB mixer in a different color model, like for example HSL or HSV. So we essentially turned the RGB mixer into an HSL mixer. But again, you should be really careful here and definitely disable preserve luminance, as this operation makes zero sense in this color model. So with that out of the way, we can experiment with, for example, mixing the green channel, which is now our saturation channel, into the blue channel, which becomes the luminance channel. So if we subtract the green from the blue, or the saturation from the luminance, this emulates the behavior of density tools to an extent, as it is practically doing the same thing. The more intense the green channel is, or the higher the saturation in that case, the more we subtract from the blue channel, or the luminance in this case. So that results in highly saturated colors becoming darker. But as always with those density operations, be careful to not overdo them and look out for increased image noise. The saturation channel usually has a lot of noise, and by mixing that into the luminance channel, it becomes really prominent fast. So, as you can see, the RGB mixer is quite a powerful tool. It seems complicated at first, but once you are familiar with it, it opens up a bunch of possibilities. And its main benefit over using something like the hue curves or the color warper, for example, is that it is incredibly clean. Of course, when you switch to other color models like HSL, it can get noisy, but that's because of the specific model, as we saw earlier. So hopefully you got an understanding of what the RGB mixer does and you will give it a go because I find this tool pretty useful and I use it on almost every project as part of my look creation, at least to some extent. So let me know if you have any use for it and also if there's any other topic you want me to talk about. So if you want to help out the channel, please click like and subscribe to the channel to not miss any future episodes and till then, I'll see you in the next video.